Hello, my dear students. Now we continue speaking about houses, about families, and of course about places, people, and so on. Today we have the following topic, running errands. What is an errand? An errand is a short journey undertaken in order to deliver or collect something, especially on someone else's behalf. From Middle English, errande, errande, meaning errand, message, mission, embassy, business. Do you like having errands? I hope you do, because these help us to be organized. Usually, when we are running errands, when we have a lot of things to do, we go to specific places. I prepared for you a list of few places that we go and there we have something done for us. At the tailors, at the watchmakers, at the dry cleaners, at the hairdressers, at the dentists. What services do you benefit from at each of the above mentioned places? First, I want you to pay attention that when we speak about the places, we have to add apostrophe S at the tailors, at the watchmakers. So you have to pay attention that this is one significant thing that you have to do when you speak about running errands to these places. I prepared for you two types of expression, expressions that you can use while speaking about these places. The first one, we can have our repaired at the. So for example, we can have our clothes repaired at the tailors or we can have our watches repaired at the watchmakers or one may can have his her at the for example one or somebody can have his hair cut at the hairdressers or one can have his her clothes cleaned at the dry cleaners. You have to understand that going to these places you will have the possibility to have something done for you. I prepare for you some situations at these places. The first is at the dry cleaners. The task is read the dialogue and choose the right homonym. So you remember Homonyms are those words that are pronounced the same, but have a different spelling. If you are ready, start doing this. Okay, I hope you have discovered all the homonyms. Now it's time to check. Let us check. Good morning. Could I have this skirt cleaned and this sweater, please? Certainly. We do all kinds of services. Would you like the skirt reproofed? You'll have to pay two lei extra for this. Yes, I'll have it down. And could I have this blouse dyed blue? It has faded. Yes, of course. That will be 20 lei altogether. Here is your receipt. Thank you. I hope that you did everything correctly. You can see that in the first sentence we use the pronoun I. The next we use the modal verb would. And the next word is lei, our currency, the currency of our country. The next is the shortened form or the short form of the verb 
will plus the pronoun I. I'll. The next one is the verb dye, which means to color something. And blue is the color itself. Here it means the place, and in this situation, usually we use here to speak about here is your um, change or here is your receipt. And the last one is the pronoun you. Okay, if you did it correctly, it's time for us to move to the next situation. The second situation is at the post office. The task is read the dialogue and complete it with the right modal verb. You have to use can twice, should once, will twice, need to and would one time. So take a few moments, pause this video, work with this, uh, with this dialogue and then we will check together. I hope you did everything correctly. Now it's time for us to see if we did it right. Clerk, good morning. What can I do for you? Good morning. I need to send a letter to France. Okay. Is it an ordinary letter or a registered one? Does it make any difference? Oh, yes. If your letter contains anything valuable, you should send it registered. How much is the registration fee? That will be 11 lei. Would you like your letter sent by air mail or surface mail? Air mail, please. How much is it all in all? It will be 5 lei more. Is it okay? Here is the money. Here is our receipt. Anything else I can do for you? No, thanks. Goodbye. Goodbye. So, if you have everything correct, it means that you rock today. Okay, let us continue. Now, it's another situation. And first, I hope that everybody who is watching this lesson and you, my dear students, like going shopping. For example, I like going shopping for shoes. And I chose another situation. It's about completing uh, the sentences with the missing prepositions. We did it. Uh, we did this from the previous lessons. So now I hope that it won't be so difficult for you to do this exercise together with me. So, if you are ready, let us start checking. When shopping for the right pair of shoes, it is important to keep many things in mind. Examining the shoe's anatomy and rigidity are some of the best ways to determine whether a pair of shoes is right for you or not. Leather dries and cracks from a lack of cleaning and conditioning. With new soles and heels and reconditioned uppers, your shoes will have new life in them. So, I hope that you have everything correct. We continue with the next part of this text about shopping shoes. You have to do the same. Complete with prepositions and we'll check together. Pause this video, work alone and then return to our video and we'll check. It's time to check. Let's do it. European shoe sizes can vary greatly from those in the United States. Caring for your shoes properly by taking them to the right shoemaker can improve both the look and function of old shoes and make them last much longer. The way you walk may be a determining factor for how long your shoes last. And my last thought for you, my dear student, is work spares us from three great evils, boredom, vice and need. Don't forget, my dear student, that you should learn English, enjoy everything you do, and keep safe. Have a nice day. Goodbye.